good morning. Sid here from Border Archery. Um, there's, <clears throat> excuse me, um, there's been a couple of videos um, posted up on uh, bolts in, bolts out, or bracing height, or, or that kind of topic. And what I want to try and do is to try and cover why bolts out is more accurate um, unless you can't reach the target. Okay, so um, first off, um, what you've got to kind of try and cover is the concept of what is preload, um, vertical stability, what that does. Um, there's a lot in this, so you might have to watch it a couple of times. But anyway, um, preload is basically, um, I'm going to be stringing and unstringing bows in ways that you shouldn't be doing it. Always use a stringer. I'm not going to faff around in a video for you. Um, I'll try and cut down your time. Okay, time watching. So, um, basically your preload is um, from there, how far does the knock travel from unstrung to full draw? Okay, but preload is actually from there to bracing height. Okay, so if I hold the bow steady and I just literally push the limb button, in a typical account, pull it out a little, right? If I push it in a little, it starts to move forward. Okay, so there's a couple of inches in there in that kind of movement. All right, which means if you have the same bracing height, you have effectively gone from pulling from there to there versus there to there. There's less movement. Okay, and that less movement means you've pulled the limbs less far in total for your draw length. Okay. So at full draw, you'll have pulled the limbs a couple inches more had you um, had you wound the limbs in. Okay, so that's that's the, the key part, and that's one of the reasons why your poundage goes up a little, and it's one of the reasons why your bow will be faster pound for pound. Okay. Now, I'm not talking about the same set of limbs, ah, but they're faster because the poundage has gone up. What I'm saying is 40 pounds wound in at 28 is faster than 40 pounds wound out at 28. Not the same limbs. Change the limbs over. Okay. Now, there's a bit of a downside to all this and it kind of can be recovered, which I think wasn't really investigated in other videos. Okay, so when we look at um, the the bracing height of the bow, that will also increase the preload, right? But it also plays other games. So, for example, if the limb bolts are in exactly the same position, but the bracing height is higher, then you have moved the limbs more from unstrung to strung. Now, and what will have happened is you'll have more bend in the limb, yeah, and you will have lifted the string out of the string groove, yeah. I'll start to show this a bit more in a minute, okay. Now, if you lift the string out of the string groove more, you end up with a shorter recurve. Okay, so the bow ends up less smooth, but you've got more string tension in most cases till you hit the peak and start to drop back down again. Okay, so the idea is that you also need to account for the vertical stability, the vertical knocking point stability of the bow. Okay, so what I'm talking about is, let's see if I can do it this way, you see the limbs moving, yeah, so if I move the string up and down, trying to get them in the video, right, you can see the limbs are moving, okay, and that's all related to this curve, okay, so if you wind the limbs in, you end up with more curve here. 
if you increase the bracing height, you end up with more curve here. And both of those are detrimental to vertical stability, and this is what I want to try and show, okay? What you can do is you can create a jig to hold the bow, and I did this back in 2011, where you can put a weight on the limb, and if you notice the yellow string to the serving here, if I pull this limb down, the serving moves towards me. You can measure that movement, okay? So what will happen is if you move backwards and forwards, you'll see these go up and down. Yeah? So if you pull that down with a weight, you'll be moving the string, okay? So you can measure that by clamping the bow and measuring the vertical stability at different stages, okay? I'll do a... In the comments, I'll post a link to the video showing you the vertical stability thread I did back in 2011. Okay, so, you saw the movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to reduce the bracing height and increase the vertical stability. Now, the same goes Bracing height's now dropped, okay? So now, the vertical stability, let's see if I can show you. I'm really having <laughs> to put some effort in here, okay? So the vertical stability is increased when this becomes less. There's a slight downside. When this becomes too little, the limb will start to follow through because there's nothing to stop it. There's no shape to take the compressive loads. Okay? So, what I'll do is I'll pause the video. Um, you'll see that the limbs are kind of wound out a little. There's a couple of threads in there. What I'll do is I'll wind them in and then we'll run with a higher bracing height and you'll see what I'm talking about. Hold on a minute. Okay, so I've wound the limb bolts in. Um, yeah. They're in quite a bit now. So, again, the limb's quite straight because the bracing height is tiny, right? The bracing height's minuscule. But the vertical stability is still monstrous. Okay? So, um, if I now try and get the bracing height back up, and this is where your stability goes all to bits. Pigeons having problems. Okay, so now we've got a lot of bend in the limb. Yeah? And the bracing height's back up to a more reasonable amount. Right? But without really doing anything, the vertical stability is all gone to bits. Okay, so again, there's lots and lots of movement. And one of the things that you'll notice is that when you put the bow down and it's got a bit of weight on it, it'll, if I put the bow down, it'll sag, right? And the bow can easily get a bit of a wobble on because the vertical stability is very low. And that's because there's too much bend in the limb, okay? So next time you see some, hear somebody saying, ah, but the bow was more accurate at the higher bracing height. Um, if they don't have the limbs out, they're talking waffle, okay? Now, as the other videos explained, um, you do end up with um, a weaker spine reaction with the higher bracing height, and that's because... Um, sorry. I got that all back to front. <laughs> Did I? Um, you get a stiffer spine with a higher bracing height because you've got less power in the bow. Back to what I was saying about the string sitting. I don't know if you can see it for the shadow. You can see it sitting out the string groove. Yeah. Um, so you've got less um, recurve 
exposed now, um, um, uh, are available to you. Um, so you end up with a, a stackier limb, but you end up with higher preload, right? Um, but again, you're looking at the total amount of movement on the limb. So again, your um, spine will be different, okay? So when somebody says that their bow is noisy and the bow quieting down at the higher bracing height, it could be that the arrow's hitting the window, not the shelf, the window on the way past or the button, and that's where some of the noise can come from. And what they find is when they run the higher bracing height, they choke off the power, they reduce the drag strip that you're racing over, therefore the top end speed, and therefore they miss here. Okay, so when they reduce the bracing height to get the noise back, they blame the limbs. It's half the time it's because they're getting a strike from here. Okay, the other half of the time is probably because they haven't got the limbs aligned properly and they're getting a bit of a click as the string clicks in there at high speed when you're shooting. All right, um, so there you go. Bolts in is the least stable, but it is the fastest. Okay, um, and there's the reason why you're least stable, but all that goes away if you run the bracing height low. So if I say you've got a seven to seven and a half inch bracing height, if you're going to run it in, run at the seven. If you're going to run it fully out, you can run at the seven and a half. Okay, so there's lots going on in there. There's also the harmonics of the arrow, which has all been described in the other videos um, that have been released over the last couple of weeks. But uh, vertical stability affects your accuracy and um, please be aware of rubbish vertical stability and I can say that we changed the pocket angles of the limb exit angles on the Tempest by about one and a half degrees total on the 27s um, to reduce the early ones to reduce the vertical stability issues when you're fully in um, this is one of the early ones um, those that recognize the dint as Raz has been spoken about. Um, yeah, so vertical stability, okay. Um, I'd, risers with 30, 25, 30, 40% adjustment range, pointless because you'll lose the vertical stability, you'll overstress your limbs, and you'll end up with an incredibly stupid bracing height if you want some accuracy out of it okay so within the 10% adjustment range we moved the 10% by about 1% to get away from a problem I'm not talking 40% I'm talking 1% within 10 gave us a much better answer okay so just trying to give you some scale as to what we're talking about I do believe Earl Hoyt did his homework properly and I do believe the 10% was about as far as you could possibly go without having a seriously reduced bow performance or a impact on your score due to reduced stability okay I think that's the the maximum range that you can effectively work to um, having pushed designs further than anybody else I think um, we're qualified to say so all right but yeah you can't get away from that unless you reduce the bracing height okay right? and I'll show you again in here so if you run them out, you can run all the ranges at a much higher bracing height. All right. Um, so the vertical stability affects, uh, sorry, the vertical stability affects your accuracy and the preload will affect your bow speed. Yeah, it's more stable. And if I reduce it again, it can get more stable again. Yeah. These are things that you can tangibly feel. I'm not talking mojo stuff that you need harmonic sensors for. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm just talking about um, good old fashioned bow making. All right, so fully in, very low bracing height, rock solid. I can't, <laughs> I'm actually bending the string in my hand to get enough to push it and pull it. All right, so vertical stability affects your accuracy. It's something you need to be aware of and it's impacted heavily on by high bracing heights and bolts fully in. 
all right? Because you get too much curve in the limb, all right? Any questions, ping in the comments. I'll try and get the link, and thanks for watching.